Intriguing question for you all. What is the potential of Chelsea Football Club this season? Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome to another video. Yes, today is the turn of Chelsea to be put under the microscope for pre-season analysis. We've done a bit of a mini-series on this, I guess you could say, where we've talked about certain clubs, put them under the microscope, analysed their previous season, their pre-season preparations, and of course talked about the potential that this forthcoming season may hold for them. We've talked about Arsenal, we talked about Aston Villa, Liverpool, Manchester City, Manchester United, and more recently Tottenham. Well, today is the turn of Maurizio Pochettino's Chelsea. I know, Maurizio Pochettino, who would have thought we would be saying Maurizio Pochettino's Chelsea, obviously after uh, being Tottenham manager, of course. Well, it is a new era at Stamford Bridge that is beginning this season, and Pochettino is at the helm of it all. What is the potential of this very, very young Chelsea squad? What could happen this season? Surely it can't be any worse than what Chelsea had to endure last season, can it? Well, we're going to be talking all about Chelsea, all about the season that was last campaign, all about their pre-season preparations for this season, and of course, the potential expectation and maybe demand of what this forthcoming season may have to offer the Blues. But before we go any further, I would like to remind you all to please like the video and also subscribe if you're new. Both things are always and greatly appreciated. And of course, I encourage you to get involved in that comment section as well. I'm sure you have a lot of interesting thoughts, comments, opinions, predictions, feelings, whatever you want to call it, in regards to the Chelsea Football Club uh, in all of those different aspects that I previously talked about. So do get involved down there because I'm sure all of them will make for great and interesting reading, I'm sure. But without further ado, let's get on with talking about Chelsea. Let's talk all about Chelsea Football Club, all about Maurizio Pochettino and everything else in between. First and foremost, let me just say that surely... Surely, this season can't be any worse than what Chelsea had to endure last season, can it? Obviously, Chelsea fans won't want to go on about it. They won't want to hear about last season. But we're going to talk about it anyway. Of course we are. Um, last season, dreadful. Last season, abysmal. I've never seen a, a state like it. I've never seen a club like it where... The new owners wanted to take centre stage. The new owners took the spotlight. The new owners were at the centre of everything that happened at Chelsea. Mainly the bad, of course, but even the little sprinkling of good bits and good and good things here and there. The owners were front and centre of it all at Chelsea. And it led to the focus being taken away from everything and being put on them. It led to an absolute chaotic and mad season. And you know it's chaotic when you go through Thomas Tuchel to get to Graham Potter to go to Frank Lampard of all managers. Yep, Frank Lampard who had a terrible half of the season with Everton. And then for whatever reason Chelsea decided to hire him as their interim manager to take them towards the end of the campaign. Why not just stick with Graham Potter at that point? That was the question on my mind. It made zero sense. And in hindsight, surprisingly, it still makes zero sense as to why they did that. Last season was chaotic. Last season was crazy. Last season was completely baffling in, in the majority of aspects of Chelsea Football Club. Um, Decision making results, performances, everything across the board was just weird and crazy and strange and abysmal, disappointing. And it ultimately led to a 12th place finish for Chelsea. No one was expecting that. However, looking at the bigger picture, looking at what's happened since the end of the season... 12th place might actually be a blessing in disguise. Mauricio Pochettino has come in now. No one was expecting him to cross that divide from obviously being a former Tottenham manager to being now a Chelsea manager. A new era is dawning at Stamford Bridge. There's a new chapter to be written in the history of Chelsea Football Club. And it could be a pretty successful one if things are to go the way that they're planning. We talked a lot of last season about how there is a bigger picture at play. 
there is a bigger picture to be seen. There is a bigger project that is going on at Chelsea when you scratch the surface of what is going on at Stamford Bridge with Todd Bowley, with Chelsea and everything else that's going on with the club, the stadium and everything else to do with that establishment. This is the beginning. This hopefully now should be the proper beginning. They've tried and they've had, they've had dem demos, they've had uh, beta tests, whatever you want to call it, in obviously Thomas Tuchel and Graham Potter and then the weird interim part of Frank Lampard, which I still don't get. Um, but now this should be the genuine beginning. They've had a huge transition this past year. Everything... From off the pitch to on the pitch. There's been a huge transition. Obviously, ownership, that was the stem of it. That was the start of it. Then you have all the backroom staff, every, all the medical staff, all the coaching staff. All of that stuff has changed behind the scenes. And then you look on the pitch. Managers changed about three or four times. This should be the one that sticks. The players have all changed. This squad is... And, for the most part, is entirely fresh, brand new. There was a massive clear-out. There was a major clear-out this summer. Pochettino came in, and there was a massive clear-out. I think there's only, like, maybe two players that have, that have survived from the main squad, at least, or the starting eleven of Chelsea last season. I think that's the goalkeeper in Kepa, who is going to be replaced, seemingly, by Robert Sanchez. We'll get on to him a little bit later. And, of course, Thiago Silva. I think, for the most part, the last starting eleven that played for Chelsea last season, everybody has been cleared out or is going to be cleared out with the remainder of the transfer window still to play. There has been a lot of change at Stamford Bridge and at Chelsea uh, this past year. And this past summer has only accelerated that. It's only moved things into the fast lane there because it's only increased. Pochettino's come in... And he doesn't like it. And that's why this managerial appointment has to stick. Because whilst there's been a lot, of, a lot of clearing out, it's left the squad, in my opinion, a little bit weaker in terms of age and experience, of course. And I will talk about the age and experience a little later. Uh, I think it's left it a little bit weaker in terms of numbers, in terms of depth, in terms of reliability. But there's a lot of excitement, there's a lot of potential, there's a lot of different things to play around with in this squad that could intrigue and interest a manager like Pochettino who likes to get stuck into this kind of thing, likes to get stuck into a squad that he can help mould and help build into his image, into his style, into his philosophy. I think there is a lot to play around and work with if you're Maurizio Pochettino. And that's, and that's a major part of the reason why I think Pochettino took the job in the first place is because I think he saw the young squad that Chelsea had to offer and the potential it had, and of course, it being a big club in itself. And that's why I think he took the job. And I think he was probably right to take the job for him personally. I remember saying at the time, I don't think it's the perfect choice that Chelsea could have appointed, but I can understand why they would appoint him, and I can definitely understand why he would jump at the chance to manage a club like Chelsea. So, I guess in certain ways, it does kind of fit. What I mean by the blessing in disguise of finishing 12th last season is that there's no European football. There is no European football, which means Chelsea don't have to beef up their squad too much in terms of squad depth. Because they will pretty much have, for the most part, one game a week. Which means they can go hard, they can go intense, they can have that tenacity, that overall Pochettino style of play. They can go at 100 mile an hour week after week after week after week. And, you know, borrowing the odd week or two where there might be a league cup game in the middle of it. Or there might be an extra Premier League game in the middle of it. They can keep the same general squad going week after week, which means that they can have a starting 11, which may bed together and bleed, uh, uh, and work together um, uh, at a more frequent pace, at a more regular basis, which means they can gel together, um, hopefully, for Chelsea's point of view, rather more quickly than you would say if it was a team that is playing um, 
every other few days because they'll be on the pitch from every other few days. They won't have time to work on training. They won't have time to work on a training ground. They'll be too busy travelling to different countries for Champions League games or Europa League games or whatever it may be. Chelsea don't have to worry about travelling this season because they only have domestic games to focus on. No, ch no Champions League, no Europa League, not even Europa Conference League means that they can spend more time on the training ground, which means they can bed in and bleed in these new players that they have at their disposal and these young players at that and bed in, bleed them in and work on this system more intensely, more thoroughly and fingers crossed for them, it works and it becomes a more well oiled machine and it all, like I say, the cohesion is there, the, the work rate is there, the energy is there and then the understanding and then reliability that comes with all of that starts to work together and starts to blend in to one another. That could be a positive and a big positive at that for Pochettino and for Chelsea this season. And it could help towards their, their season ambitions. For me, their season ambitions right off the bat and as a bare minimum is get back into the Champions League. I think with the loyalty points and the, and the sort of loyalty... Uh, is it loyalty points? Loyalty points. That sounds like a supermarket thing. Um, I think with the sort of um, league, sort of new format of the Champions League that's going to come into play next season, the new format. I think Chelsea are well within the the bracket, shall we say, that that UEFA have put forward for if Chelsea don't finish in the top four and they finish fifth or something like that, they are still able to qualify for the Champions League. Um, so I think Chelsea have a little bit of leeway this season if they don't quite reach the top four heights. But I would strongly suggest that a top five finish is probably um, something that Chelsea can achieve and probably will achieve this season. I personally think that this Pochettino style of play, of obviously being a high-pressing, high-intensity kind, of, um, kind, of, uh, kind of philosophy is going to work very well with the youngsters at Chelsea right now. And I think that, obviously, the more time they have on the training ground to work on that, work more thoroughly on it, it's going to work to their advantage. And I genuinely do think a top-five finish is what Chelsea can and will achieve this season. They've obviously spent a lot of money, but it's a lot of money that is going towards more the future than it is for the here and now. And that might not please a lot of Chelsea fans, but it's got to be a big project because, like I said earlier, there's not a lot of experience in this squad. There's the odd one or two sprinklings of it here and there, Thiago Silva obviously being the standout one with age and experience. But for the most part, this squad is relatively young, it's hungry, it's determined, it's it's got a lot of tenacity about it. It's got a lot of ambition about it. This is a squad that is set up very, very well for the long-term future. It might not be for the here and now, but in terms of the long-term future, it is looking very, very bright. And if Pochettino, like I say, can get this squad together, can help the cohesion, can help the understanding, can make it more reliable adds a few sprinklings of other players here and there. If they can get Moises Caicedo in that midfield, for example, that is a monumental and massive signing for Chelsea. If they can secure Moises Caicedo, that is big. And I, for one, would say to Chelsea right now, put the money on the table. Don't care what Brighton want. Put that money on the table because I think he works perfectly in a Pochettino system and, I, and the idea of having... Caicedo and Enzo Fernandez as a double pivot midfield when you've got the likes of Nkunku and brand new signing in front of them or you've got you know who uh, 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 Nico Jack Nicholas Jackson up front you've got Mudrik who I think will have a big season this this campaign and I think a better season and you know I say young there's all there's Raheem Sterling as well uh, in the mix as well, uh, rel uh, a relatively experienced player in himself and a player that's obviously won multiple t trophies with Manchester City in the past. It's a good squad building up. It's got a lot of potential. It's got a lot of excitement about it and it's got a lot of optimism about it, in my opinion, from the outside looking in. 
I think there are still holes in that team. I still think there are ways that they that the team could improve. But if you're talking like a year, two years, maybe three years at maximum down the line, under Pochettino, getting used to his style of play, getting used to the way that he wants to play, obviously seeing what he's done previously at the likes of Tottenham, I think this squad could definitely be able to build towards something and something big that is going to be long-standing for the long-term future. The only worry I have is that at the end of the day, this is Chelsea Football Club and they don't have a lot of patience and their fans don't have a lot of patience. And I do worry with him being a former Tottenham manager, and I've said this when he was appointed, if things don't exactly go according to plan right off the bat, Chelsea fans aren't going to want him around for too much longer. And I do fear that he's already facing a massive uphill battle when it comes to being the new Chelsea manager. But I think Chelsea need this to work. And Chelsea need to give him every opportunity and every chance and all the time in the world to try and make it work. Because otherwise, you're going to be back to square one again. He's going to bring in these new players. He's going to bring in these youngsters... And if it doesn't work out, you're going to want him gone. And if he does go, if Todd Bowley does cave in and he does eventually get rid of him, you're going to bring in a new manager who's going to come in and go, right, well, these young players I don't like, I don't want, I don't think they're good enough, whatever. Get rid, max, uh, a maximum e exit, like everybody clear out, massive major clear out yet again bring in some new players and then when that doesn't quite hit the ground running when that doesn't quite um come off the bat so to speak and and obviously be an instant success you want him out again you get him out and you go in this vicious circle of just wanting play wanting uh, instant success managers coming in not hitting the ground running every so often you might get one or two managers here and there that may actually do that and may actually be an instant success to a certain extent but when the trophies dry up, you'll want to obviously bring in another one. This has to be a long-term project, again, for Pochettino. I said the same thing with Graham Potter last season. You, you should have stuck with him. You didn't? Okay, whatever. This, with Pochettino, needs to be a project that you need to stand by and that you need to give all the time or every chance in the world for to be a success because otherwise you're just going to keep on going in a horrible vicious circle that you're not going to be able to get out of like i say it's a very young squad i see it being similar to the way arsenal were a couple of years ago in that it was a young squad that arsenal had under Mikel arteta a couple of years ago i think it was the season where they had fourth in the palm of their hands and then when the expectation grew when the demand grew of them actually finishing in the top four they crumbled a little bit they caved into the pressure and they ultimately let it slip i see chelsea being in a similar situation there where i think that they have a, a, a very good squad building they have a good squad for the future but ultimately i just don't see them being able to go on to do anything monumental shall we say in terms of winning trophies when the pressure gets tough and when the demand and the uh, expectation level ra raises itself a few notches i think top five is more than reasonable and more than fair for a squad that has spent so much money for a squad that has got pochettino as their manager for a squad that has got huge potential and you can work and you can build off that and you can get back into European football and you can obviously go again next season. I think that that is more than reasonable and more than fair. I don't see it being as similar of a bad season or even worse of a bad season than what it was last uh, the last campaign. But I am very intrigued by this Chelsea team, by their young squad and by the potential of maybe bringing in a Moises Caicedo, who, like I say, will enhance that midfield and the players around him immensely. I think he is vital. I think he is key. And like I say, I think Chelsea definitely need to put the money on the table for him because otherwise I see their midfield being a little hollow and I see their midfield being a little... 
a little weak in in um, in terms of depth, in terms of quality, in terms of physicality, and that's where I slightly would worry about them if they weren't to acquire a player of Caicedo's ability and even potential because he's still very very young. Put them on the table for Caicedo, and top top five I think is guaranteed. I'm intrigued to see some of the new signings that they that they brought in, some of the youngsters they brought in. Nicholas Jackson, in particular, in preseason looks interesting. Christopher Nkunku, I know it's very unfortunate that he picked up an injury uh, in preseason, but hopefully that isn't as bad as what um, some people are fearing. I'm intrigued to see what he can do and if he can bring the kind of form that he's shown in the Bundesliga la over the past couple of years to the Premier League. I'm very intrigued to see what he can do. There are others as well. Robert Sanchez, like I say, be, being the goalkeeper. I don't see him being the long-term goalkeeper of Chelsea. But if he's going to be a stopgap to maybe Chelsea going on to sign um, a big goalkeeper in the future, whether it's going to be the AC Milan goalkeeper, Mike Mannion, or anybody else that is out there that could be a very, very, very good goalkeeper for the, for the future, then I, I think that may be the case there. But Chelsea managed to managed to eventually find their goalkeeping choice. I'm very, very intrigued by Chelsea overall. Very intrigued by this young squad. And like I say, I think top five is definitely where I'm going to put Chelsea somewhere um, in my pre-season predictions. I think that is uh, a fairly fair choice, a fairly fair, reasonable expectation of them. Um, and like I say, I, I personally think no European football may be a blessing in disguise uh, for Mr. Pochettino going forward. And I'm very intrigued to watch Chelsea going forward. I just hope that they don't win on the opening day of the season against my club Liverpool. So fingers crossed on that one. Um, but of course, as I always say, these are just the thoughts, comments, opinions, predictions, feelings, whatever you want to call it, of this guy. I want to know what you guys think. What do you make of Chelsea Football Club going forward this season? What are your own thoughts, your comments, opinions, predictions, feelings, whatever you want to call it on Chelsea? Uh, I'm sure they'll make for great and interesting reading down below in the comment section, so do get involved down there. Otherwise, hit the like button on the way. If you enjoyed the video, subscribe if you're new. I want to see more content like this. Both things always and forever greatly appreciated. And as always, thank you all so much for watching and listening. I've been Fletch. This has been another Fletch Talks video, and I'll see you speak to you all again soon in another video or live stream or whatever it may be. Cheers, guys. Have a good day.